So what's up, uh, YouTubers? I figured I'd make a video here. This I've seen many, many uh, articles online on uh, YouTube, especially on how to recharge R410A um, in one of these units. Let me give you a little uh, background here. I ended up just now getting this unit. It's a model RSG1448S1E. It's a four ton, I don't know if you can see that. But I wanna show you something on this right here. If you look at this uh, rating plate right here, nowhere on this rating plate do you see anything with a sub cool or a super heat. So, what they did is the book came with a, a little chart here. Let's see if I can show you this real quick here, right here. Everybody see this little chart right here? Now, the numbers you're paying attention to right here are gonna be your liquid temperature and your liquid pressure. You can clearly see where it says add refrigerant below the curve, do not add refrigerant, pressure reading, curve, saturation, curve. So if you go over here, gives you spelled out instructions on how to do. Once again, no superheater subcooling uh, temperature. Now this is a piston, this is not a TV or a TXV, so, I'm gonna go by uh, superheat regardless to take the reading, but the book calls for me to use the liquid line uh, for the measurements. So let me show you how this is all hooked up here. If you pay attention right here, right here, this red thing right here, this would be your liquid line. Your liquid line is always your small line. Your uh, vapor line or low side is always gonna be your big line. So now if you look right here, I've got a digital gauge, a little dewy, dewy uh, seems to work great But what I was looking for right here these here are gonna be your liquid line side right here red So I've got a thorough probe that goes into there I'm looking at this number here, and I'm looking at this number here. This here is my condenser temperature upstairs in the attic This here is my or excuse me. This is my condenser, temp condenser temperature Here right outside this unit right here the outside unit my evaporator temperature is 47.6 my line on that side is reading uh, 63.7. Now, if you pay attention to the curve, you see 269, 80 degrees. So you go back to this little curve here. You're gonna look at 80 degrees. It's calling for a curve of right around 280. Now, this thing fluctuates here. It'll go from 269, 268 to 270. Uh, it'll fluctuate a hair. So I'm about right where I want to be. I've got a temperature of 63.6 coming back out of my uh, upstairs unit. I think this is where I'm going to end it. Now, I could have put more into this. I could have went right. I would have felt comfortable um, going right around two, two, or 275, 278, somewhere in that zone. But you know what? I'm at 270. The inside of the house is getting really nice and cold. But I just figured I would show everybody uh, how you do one of these particular units. Um, as you can see, I've also got the Imperial uh, vaporizer. And what this does, when you're filling on the low side here on the suction line, you cannot fill it as, as a straight liquid. It has to go in as vapor, or otherwise you can mess up your compressor on the inside of the unit. So I ended up putting, or buying one of these. That comes down, goes into the, um, suction side and then of course you got your r410a here flipped upside down because uh, you want liquid you don't want vapor and then i've got my little sight gauge right here you can see where it's where i've got gauges off right now um you're not going to charge with anything with the red it's going to be charged only with the blue the suction side but i just figured i'd show anybody uh how to do this if anybody has any questions you know feel free to uh, message me if you like my channel please subscribe thanks have a great day